Alex Og and uh, a year or so back I wrote a book called No More Heroes and it was a book about punk rock in the UK in the late 70s but one of the things it tried to do was talk about some of the great undiscovered music of that time and uh, one of the bands that I dug up if that isn't an unpleasant term was a band called the Private Dicks from Bristol um, who used to be on the Avon Cohen compilation which was kind of a classic regional compilation at that time and they did a single and other bits and pieces but they were kind of a celebrated band that, that, that a few people around the world knew about but, but nothing really had been written about them and that was kind of the point of the book. You never said. And they do live and they live lives and they you know they're all part of a, a network that sort of has survived all that you know there's a bit of camaraderie and it's it's quite sweet seeing seeing people basically who've grown up together are still still doing it and still enjoying it <laughs> Uh, from Giorno to uh, Roma, this is uh, day one. Um, Alan and myself have just arrived at the hotel, and it's pretty basic, I have to say, but it sort of lives with the, uh, the rock and roll tradition. But uh, it's in a bit of a dodgy area in, in Roma. Here we are, and we're waiting to see the others. Gavin and Neil have been here since yesterday. Uh, we've got to try to find them somehow, but um, and Alex is going to come later. And uh, the other boys, well, God knows when they're going to arrive. Four, three, two, one. Take one. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we have another fart? What? Another fart. <laughs> That is uh, Mr. Mark Seawright. Drums. And general layabout. One of the worst things I can actually say about that is that my daughter, my youngest daughter, actually turned to me and said, God, he's hot, Dad. I don't want to know things like that off my 17-year-old daughter. He's 46 years old, for God's sake. I've been to Rome before, actually, but I spent most of the weekend in prison. Um, it wasn't my fault, though. <laughs> it really wasn't my fault. It was my brother. He always gets me in trouble. Um, so, uh, day of the gig, a couple of hours of sleep, terrible hangover. Looking forward to it. I ain't got a clue what time I got in last night. Half oh, five, somewhere like that. I don't know where or how. I met a girl, lovely girl. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't be speaking to you now. First day, usual chaos, and I don't know what I'm doing here really. If someone said, um, there's a flight home now, I think I'll take it to be honest and um, I just want to go home because I've had enough. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm tired, I'm grouchy, hungover, I don't even know why I'm here to be quite honest with you. Um, to play with these kind of bunch of guys is, well, it's not that good actually. <laughs> The music's okay, you know, but the people, they're not very nice people. 
Um, and I don't, you know, I don't get paid for it even. I'm just, I'm just here. <laughs> you know, just, I don't even know why. I'm sorry. This is a rom. I'm meant to be introducing the private dicks, uh, but they've gone to the bar and it's not even midday yet. It's nine o'clock in the morning. So, uh, when I arrived here last night, uh, I was kindly told that I was probably the, the more professional end of this, this operation. So I think we're fucked, basically. Bonjour, though. It's the day of the gig, uh, all is chaos. We can't find the promoter uh, on any of his telephone lines. Two of the band are missing. Uh, everywhere is chaos, as you can probably see as you look around. Uh, Neil is in bed here. Uh, and I wish I still was. We are waiting for Mr. Seaprunt to arrive back. He has got himself lost somewhere from here, about three miles away, without any shoes. He appears to have got lost about five o'clock. This, this is a gentleman who promised me that he, er, I'm with you, Gaff, and I ain't doing nothing. Like, no drinks tonight, early night. Get right into it, okay? Right, because we're up there. We're still waiting for him to turn up. Yeah, when he phones back again, um, give him my number. He went, he went walk about at five o'clock this morning. Okay, well, if he phones back again, um, well, give him, you know my number, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, but you know, yeah, 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 yeah okay. But you know, you can, I, I don't know your number, but I can phone you. If it's on the phone, you know what I mean? So, um, tell him to phone me or, um, where are we? Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be, yeah, it's Friday, it must be Germany. Are we playing in Dresden tonight? Yeah. Oh, we are in Dresden, that's good. <laughs> the last message on her mobile from him was, tell the boys I'll see him in Dresden. <laughs> Without excuse. <laughs> Ooh, delight. <laughs> Hello? Hello? No, who's Ronnie? <laughs> I think you have, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Ronnie. Gav, come on, say it's Ronnie. Say hello, Ronnie, yeah? Oh, this is probably for dialing again. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, it is Ronnie here. <laughs> hello. How can I help you? Hang on, I'll pass you on to a real Welshman. Hang on. I don't know. Hello. It's Ronnie here. <laughs> Isn't it? He told me I was Ronnie. Who, who's Ronnie anyway? <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. What? <laughs> I'm after a, I'm after what she said. I'm after a hot tip for the Cheltenham Gold Cup. <laughs> I'll give you a hot tip, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do the horses. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was so happy when you arrived finally on Thursday and I said okay they're here and we, we, we can do it <laughs> it will work and then your drummer was lost on the next day I said no fuck he hasn't got a clue where I live <laughs> He didn't know how my real name is. No phone number, nothing, no shoes at all. You take the, uh, A, I need shoes, B, I need a pint. I'm flat for a lot older. I like them, I quite like them, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like them. Go on there, mate. No, I can't tell you. <laughs> Come on, you've got to two cameras. I will cut out of you. Yeah. Come on, we need to know this. Well, what's your rules? What's your rules? Your rules. Your rules. rules. 148 your rules. Oh yeah, my proper. god. Yeah, I uh, Going back. No <laughs> <laughs> stop. We are in Dresden, the famous Dresden. Bomber Harris, you failed. You are a complete failure. I show you why. Look at the size of that fucking thing. And you missed it, you bastard. Look at it, it's huge. How can you fucking hit the old place and still miss that fucking flame? <laughs> Harris, you're a failure, you ass. And I say that nicely. Sunday morning, we are in Bad Heightsfield, uh, a bit overcast. Uh, we feel a lot better today. Bowel evacuation has taken place <laughs> and we're all better. Now, if you, you didn't know this, this is commem commemorating the fact that this is the headquarters of the World Gurning Championships, <laughs> as you can see by implemented down there. And in fact, here are four of the locals who are practicing at this moment. This statue here, our German friends have informed us, is the German people's, um, this statue is very famous. 
It is to commemorate the world's poor, or as they are known in German, der Schetterpol. <laughs> Play it by one o'clock. So I think maybe maximum another hour, and then we'll fuck off. Yeah, okay, then we get the kid. Yeah. Yeah. Should we just leave it there? Fuck you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know, it's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. There's some steps there, I won't go to bed. What time are we aiming for? It seems we haven't got quite enough money to pay for the bill. <laughs> this is what we're going to be doing the dishes in the moment, I'm just doing it for you. To the world. Yes! <laughs> 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 Here's the tour bus. Unfortunately, this is the tour bus of the Prague Brest Orchestra. Our tour bus is over there. Very nice it is too. Bed and breakfast. What more could you ask for? Thank you very much, Bad Hertzfield. It could be an Einer Bad Hertzfielder. <laughs> And finally, there is a plaque commemorating our visit to Bad Hatsfield. As you can see in Germany, they are called Prede Kunstruck. Louder, louder. Then, then Gavin wrote me on, on MySpace. I hate MySpace, but it, it, there are good parts of it and very, very bad. And the good part was when, when I got that mail from Gavin, it was like, no, it can't be fucking true. That's Gavin King writing me? <laughs> I'd never believed that, never, never ever, that, that we'll play with the private dicks one day. I remember. <laughs> Right, this is the road we used to walk down. We were out down here on a morning in May 1979 to do our first demo. We actually bought some booze from there, I seem to remember rightly. And uh, we just came down here to San Conception Studios where we actually recorded the first demo. And this is the place just here. It's no longer here now, it's moved. But it's in that building there, right on the end there. That was San Conception Studio, and that's where we did the first demo of the three thug songs. She said, Go, uh, Green is in the Red, and Forget the Night. Now, Forget the Night was written all about City Road. And if this is City Road, and if we pan the camera across, we'll see the sign over there, there's City Road. But we used to come down here uh, three, four nights a week, and we used to rehearse uh, in a place just on the left hand side here, which I'm just going to pull up. It's, it's horrible, ugly little building here, which is called, now, called St Paul Settlement. It was known then as the Dockland Settlement, and it was all to do with uh, the sailors and everything else that went on. Uh, we played many, many gigs in there, actually. Okay, 30 years ago, I used to live here. I had lots of sex in that room. <laughs> it was great, if only I could remember it. 
44 Fremantle Road, Cotton, Bristol, BS6. It was here, one probably Tuesday, Wednesday night, that this strange little man turned up with a guitar. He walked down those steps over that side and knocked on the door. I thought that's probably that strange little man they introduced me to on the Friday night when they dragged him over because he couldn't walk. They told me he was a songwriter. <laughs> so I just sat there and thought, well, he'll go away in the end. He never went away. He just kept hammering on the door. So I opened the door up, in he came. We sat here till three o'clock in the morning. He fell asleep about four times and we wrote, she said, go. Go, go get out of here, go. And in fact, this is the place where I got out of. And this, the whole song, she said, go, is about that place in there. And I hope she's forgiven me. <laughs> we are the lead, similar to that, that was going out the window, down to the floor, yeah, and into uh, uh, just, right idea, just one you? socket, and it glued. It was that we had it. Free to all the music. When that fan, we used to have a little bit When that fan got cut off down there, we moved the cables from the back of the stone down the back to the next one. We moved all around the roof. I don't know what you're Okay, behind me, this is uh, the infamous place where the dance Do the Kleine was actually invented. If you see up the top, up there, and right to the bottom down there, a man called John Klein, who, for his sins, because he lived, he ended up in Susie and the Banshee. And he fell all the way down to the bottom, whereupon he was urinated on by some drunken people. Um, a sad tale to retell. I give you Elmgrove. John Klein, RIP. Well, exactly, well, almost, except he lived. But if he hadn't have lived, that would have been right. All right, John? Okay, so uh, here I am stood outside the old door to a place called the Kensington Arms, as they call it now, known to everybody, all in sundry, as the Kenny. The Kenny was the home of the Dicks. It was just the place where we all went. Over there behind me is where I used to live. There is Stanley Road, and at number four, that's where I met the trouble and strife. I go up there once a week and throw stones through its bloody windows. This door, we had wonderful time through here, and here we are. God bless you, sir, and all who drink in you. One of the bands that I saw that I thought really had something special was Private Dick. Uh, they were, to me, they were, they were like a cross between, um, how can you put it, they were a cross between the damned and the hollies, I thought. They had that lovely uh, loud guitar edge, but they had a front man um, who delivered, not unlike Alan Clark on a, on a good day, and it did really well. John Peel loved it, played it every night for about three or four weeks. Uh, Private Dick's track, Grims and the Red, got played all over the place on the, on the radio. Got daytime airplay, they even got BBC sessions from it. Put your hands together, <laughs> private dicks! <laughs> Well, welcome to the garden of the Tate Gallery in London. Over here, you can see backward facing chair with ball. This is on sale for four million pounds, which I believe is a bargain. Blue sweepy uppy thing with brush and brick. And can I just say, can I just say, for three million dollars, you could have no bed. 
<laughs> Welsh bastard. Ah! <laughs> and over there, man committing adultery. <laughs> Don't keep that in, Jack. <laughs> taxis again and uh, there was police involved but I don't think I was in trouble. Is that the sort of thing? Yeah! <laughs> 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 